Okay, welcome back everybody to the Cranberry Secondary Podcast. As always, you have myself, Mr. Jung. Got myself, Mr. L. And our special guest. Uh, Miss Lewis. Hey. Yeah, hey. Thank you. So, You're welcome. If the students do not know who you are, can you give us a quick um, introduction? Yeah, so I teach uh, food tech. Um, I teach from year 7 to year 12 food. I'm also a health teacher, but mm. I haven't actually taught it at this school. Oh. So, hmm. I taught it for, actually, I know I did. I taught it for a little bit when they separated PE and health at year 8. Mm -hmm. So I taught mm. health a little bit then, but then they merged it back together. So. Mm. But Interesting. teach all the food students. Yeah. Mm. If you guys don't actually have, if you somehow have not met Miss Lewis, um, if you don't know, she's actually been a really great support for when I just freshly became a food tech teacher because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll look at a recipe and it's like, yeah, sure, I can, I can do this. How do I get my kid, like my students to do this? Yeah, exactly it's true. very different, like mm. cooking by yourself to cooking with, you know, 25 students. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very different. It's chaos. And there's like so much you have to think about. Yeah. It's like, how much does the ingredients cost? And then like, can I, can we afford this for like yeah. every single how class? Much, how much can I order? And sometimes, you know, you're cooking all day for five periods. Mm. It's exhausting. But you're always raising your voice as well. Mm. Yeah. Really loud. But then you've got to think about, you know, <coughs> knives and fire. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Clean up as well. Yes, clean up. Yes. Mm. Clean up. We don't use dishwashers, so mm -hmm. it's a yeah. shock to some students' <laughs> system. Well, actually, I had students the other day who were like, oh, there's a dishwasher here. Can we use it? And it's like, no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. They try, they try to. They try to get away with it every mm. single year. Yeah. Every single year, there's always students in a class, but no, it's for Louise only. Mm. Mm. Or if you're, if you're like us, it usually it's used for just holding the dishes and not actually washing them. Yes. Ah, yes, yeah. yes, that is true. In Asian culture, it's very yeah. common. Where, I do. Yeah. yeah, my mother does not believe in dishwashers. Oh, they yes. believe that it wastes more water mm -hmm. and that it will damage the plates. So it's usually more used as storage. So if you come over to my house and you open the dishwasher, it's like plates and bowls that she doesn't necessarily normally use other than for parties and then she'll unwrap them from the cling wrap uh, and then use them yeah oh my mum does something yeah. different where yeah, it's do. like um all the pots and pans go in the dishwasher ah safe space yeah the nice antique um glass and like rimmed serving plates yeah. that like you can bake in as well they go in the oven because <laughs> mm. in my high school when I was a student yeah we didn't have dishwashers either so I found it pretty common just to wash dishes I found it pretty normal mm. but um, how about the both of you for food tech in high school did you guys have dishwashers or did you even have food tech? we didn't have food tech I, um, we had a cafe program oh, yeah. ah. so like in year 9 you had to you had two weeks where it was all class classes were cancelled. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> all Private school yeah, things. All Private classes schools. were cancelled. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had the first week where you learned how to make different recipes that you wanted to make. You learned how to make coffee as well. Mm. I, I had a music lesson, so I never learned how to make coffee. So you taught me. I eventually did. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and then um, the second week, we'd actually run the cafe. The whole right. point of it was like trying to get us to cook a little bit more, work mm. in the whole hospitality setting for other students as well. And then we had to work out how much profit we'd make, and then the team with the most profit would win. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. we won. Of course, of course you can write that in. Food tech for you, Mr. Lewis? Yeah, no, I had standard food tech classes like what we have now, so I always mm. wash dishes. Mm -hmm. um, at home, I don't do the dishes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, it's kind so, of, yeah. yeah. I do all the cooking, and my husband washes all the dishes. Yeah. I I really don't ah. like washing dishes, but we use the dishwasher. Okay. <laughs> we are very much dishwasher people. We're yeah. building a house actually. Yeah. And the first thing that we looked at was the dishwasher. <laughs> yes. I actually got a new one because I'm moving into my new place tomorrow and my dishwasher, um, it automatically opens when it's done oh, and it fancy. sings a song. So I, I didn't choose it because uh, my wife wanted to choose it. I've got which brand and the buttons are like, hidden inside the oh. uh, believer. So. I was like, when I, the first time it happened, I was like, just cleaning up around the house and just hear this song playing <laughs> and then the dishwasher just like magically oh. opens by itself. And I'm like, I feel like I'm at Melbourne Central. Like who needs the <laughs> clock? Who needs a clock that comes out by itself and sings when this one can also do the same thing, but wash dishes. My washing machine mm. sings. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same thing. Yeah, but we're actually getting two dishwashers. 
So oh, yeah, because we're getting we've got a butler's pantry. So we've got a standard oh. normal dishwasher, and then our other dishwasher there. It's two drawers. Yep. So um, yeah. I actually find it very fascinating because I only started looking into house like actual house structures last year, mm. and then so I actually explored what the whole butler's pantry thing was for the uh, first time, <laughs> and I was like, now you who are right. these rich people who actually <laughs> have butlers? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, no, yeah. it's just uh, we because we're in a house now, um, and there's not much storage, so mm. um, we've got nowhere to put like you know cake tins, and we don't even have an air fryer. <laughs> no, a lot of air fryers are a big yeah. thing, but we mm. don't have one because we've got nowhere to store it. Yeah. So we get got a big butler's pantry, and mm. that's a that means I can go out shopping and buy all the yeah. all the kitchen mm. things. <laughs> yeah, and I'm surprised that um, maybe you don't have a choice, but you go home and you cook because my dad, being a chef. The last thing he wants to do when he goes home is cook more. Ah, uh, yes, I hear that. Yeah, I'm in a kitchen all day, but um, my husband cannot cook. <laughs> he made tacos once. How was it? Uh, well, it took an hour and a half to make tacos, and the kitchen looked like literally a bomb had exploded yeah. in there. Mm. So, but I finished work earlier than him anyway, so it's easier for me to go home and cook because yep. it doesn't take me very long, and then he washes all the dishes. Mm, exactly, so that, yeah. that's, that's our little plan. On the yeah. weekend, though. It's a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a takeaway night, and then nice. um, I'm still cooking. Oh. <laughs> still cooking. Wow. Uh, mm. I mean, like, I guess that's kind of nice. Like, you have a bit of something that is nice and, pro like, not professionally made, but, like, made externally that you probably don't have access to in for ingredients. Yeah, that's right. And then something to accompany it. And, like, I don't know about you guys, but, like, if I was to order something, it'd be pretty nice just to have, like, all the really good food and then mm. i'll just like make my own rice yeah, yeah. well i don't so we don't have a deep fryer or anything so i don't do any deep fried food at home mm. so my husband will either have that mm. or he'll have seafood because i don't like seafood and i don't like mm. the smell of it yeah mm. um so i won't cook it inside mm. inside my house yep. so he'll always order something like that um mm. when we go out okay. yeah yeah but um this year you sat next to the microwave and i can yes, imagine I did. <laughs> And you still are. You still are. <laughs> yeah. Didn't yell at too many people. And people with tuna cans. Oh, I hate people that have tuna in yeah. the office. They stink. Oh. I'm sorry. You're one of those. But you're lucky. I am one of those. The year nine office is like double the size of the year 11 office. That's and true. there is more windows. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. All we have is just a little air purifier that sits right behind Mr. Lewis. Well, like, I have this one. Like, it's really weird because... I do tuna rice, but it's like the tomato and onion one. Yeah. And so one time mm. I was eating it, had a staff member come in and they were like, oh, that smells really nice. And I'm mm. like, are you serious? Yeah, because yeah. Lauren says that about tuna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah, I remember sharing an office with Mr. Porter. And I remember, yeah, the moment I opened the tuna can, he lost it. He was like, oh, what is that smell? <laughs> like, so bad, my mom. And I was oh, like, well, never Mr. again. Mr. Porter's in my office. Exactly. So we'll, we'll be able to... Let everyone One end each. <laughs> no tuna. Like, no yeah. tuna office. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, just keeping on the same topic of food, by the way. Sure. When we go overseas, mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but the first thing I gravitate towards to, or the most important thing for me, isn't the sightseeing. Mm. It's actually the food. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 100%. Definitely. Does anyone have like a certain dish that they really like and would travel overseas to oh. for? We actually went to Thailand this year. Mm. We managed to get there and back fine. Nice. Uh, sorry, last year, last mm. year. Yeah. Um, and we went to Singapore as well. And I found their markets were so good. The food yeah. was so fresh mm. and um, yeah, market food. Yeah. Is yeah. Singapore more or Thailand more, do you would say? Oh, we really like both markets. Mm. We didn't get to the Singapore market because mm. we didn't realize how close it was to the yep. last few nights of our trip. Ah, yeah. But um, over the last few years, we've really enjoyed dumplings. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. We had never really had good dumplings before, mm. uh, but there's a place in Clayton that we go to, Mr. Chef Dumpling, mm. and they're the best dumplings. Mm. That's really good. Which yeah. is really good. So yeah, we tried to find those while we were over there, but... Um, yeah, a lot of rice and sort of noodle dishes that we hadn't really mm. had before, mm. which was yeah. nice. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been to the Americas or European countries, so everywhere overseas I've been has been contained to the Asian countries. Mm. So I, I mean, I do still get to try a different variety because Japanese dishes is very different to, let's say, your Hong Kong, Singaporean dishes. And even Singaporean dishes are quite different. And the great thing about Singaporean dishes is because it's next to Malaysia where there's the 
Chinese influence, there's also the Indian influence, the Indonesian influence, so and so variety. exactly, yeah. and so that's why I remember like uh, going on holiday to Singapore with Mr. Chamberlain and Miss Blackson, and Miss Blackson being a researcher, she's like, I want to go here, here, I'm like, sure, sure, all right, we go visit your places, and afterwards, all right, all right, now it's my turn, let me yeah. show you what the locals eat, and then I took them to this one market, and you can see that they were the only two. Uh, Australians there, <laughs> everyone else or Asia, and that was already a really good sign. And we sat down, had to order in Chinese. Food comes out, giant portions, really fresh seafood, like mm. everything. And they were just like, "Yeah, we're we're coming here again next time." <laughs> I'm like, exactly. Yeah. You, you gotta, you gotta go. So I went to America once. Yeah, and um, it's because you mentioned America, mm. and we went to McDonald's because it was one day mm -hmm. busy mm. day after a trip, and yeah. we ordered a cheeseburger meal, mm. and we got an extra cheeseburger in there, and we were like, oh, oh score. Yeah. <laughs> then we went back, you know, a few weeks later to a different McDonald's, a different state, and we ordered the same thing again, and there was another cheeseburger in there, ah. and we were like, what oh. is happening? Um, but their cheeseburger meals, you actually get two cheeseburgers in their in their meals by default yeah mm. yeah uh, we didn't because we didn't really yeah. look at the menu we just wow. said we'll get a cheeseburger meal and um all their drinks you, free refills yeah. for their drinks and their bottles their uh, the yeah, cups, cups are, are huge. huge they're so big mm -hmm. crazy big yeah. their small i think is like our medium yeah yeah um food wars there's a youtube channel which does something like that they compare yeah. american mcdonald's and they have the british mcdonald's which we're more closer to the british one and compare yeah like um, this quarter pounders is actually quarter of a pound. Yeah. Um, the, the drink sizes yeah. Yeah, and all that stuff and so different. And, but more interestingly is the ingredients they use. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Americans and their McDonald's compared to the British one. It's like fries. Oh, we have potatoes, salt and water. And America it's like, Ban -na 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 -na. all these artificial chemicals, sweeteners, yeah. colors. And they're really oily. Their meat is yeah. so oily. I remember opening the bag and the bag was that big oil stain all over it. Oh. Mm, yeah. 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 But then all the McDonald's in different countries are all different as well. Yes. Yeah, you can get lots, a lot of places have like, you know, fried prawns and things yeah. like that. And mm. I remember in Hawaii, you get a tub of pineapple with each meal that you get. Oh, <laughs> really? that's nice. Yeah, that was great. Oh, I would love to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I remember going to China and basically what they did was they had like, I know they like de-skinned the pineapple. Like, yeah. Okay. It's really weird to call it de-skinning it, but they literally <laughs> just like peeled it okay. and then shoved the pineapple on a stick, spiralized it. Yep. And then it was just like a skewer on a like oh. pineapple skewer. At Macca's? No, like just oh, no. on the street. Oh, on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then, oh, but like back to Macca's. It's yeah. really weird how the menu changes depending on where you go. Yeah. Which yeah. country you're in. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, Hong Kong. There's actually like macaroni soup yeah. as a breakfast option. Oh, yeah, wow. rice yeah. as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Of, a lot of them have rice as yeah. well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the shaker fries. Yeah, they yeah. now have it here. Now, now like, have it here as Back well. in Hong Kong, it was like seaweed and like like four other different flavors of shaker mm. fries. Wow. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but I I think we may have talked about it before. But I know, um, for example, KFC their menu is a bit more similar, but the the taste of their food is extremely different like mm. apparently if you go to new zealand this is what i've heard from like kiwi friends um uh, is that the kfc there's like a must try apparently really? it's juicier more fresh like they they bring in the fresh produce more frequently yeah and apparently apparently it's a must try so i, I mean that's what i've heard for kfc but mac is not so much it's just more of menu items are different but mm. uh not so much of this one's fresher than that one, yeah. or so on. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I think I remember there being like, I, it was either it was like gourmet Maccas or a Michelin star Maccas. Where? <laughs> I think it was in Hong Kong or Taiwan. Oh, wow. oh yeah, sounds like something they yeah, would do. It was really <laughs> weird. Like yeah. they let you customize everything and then you, they set you down and like, I think there was like, yeah, it was just a, a weird- At McDonald's? Yeah, at a McDonald's. Wow. Which there's, you'd never imagine. There's Maccas weddings as well. Yeah. Have you, <laughs> have seen, have you oh seen articles God. on that? Yeah, there's like Maccas weddings where it's like the guests get Nuggets and I've seen a KFC one. Yeah. A KFC mm. wedding on that uh, Super Size Me. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. it must have been McDonald's. It should. Oh, it could have been. Yeah, I mean, Super Size Me yeah. was about Maccas. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there were people getting married in McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know why they would. <laughs> yeah, I, do. I would not. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember when we used to Sorry. have like birthday parties at Maccas. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Classic. Yeah. I think everyone. Growing up, in yeah, had at, least one. One. Yeah. at least one. At least one. At least one. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. it was like face painting and yeah. everything. Yeah, mine was yeah. my eighth. 
eighth ah, birthday. I don't See? remember when mine Gosh, was. Gosh, I would not remember that. Well, that's the thing, because <laughs> for me, like, pa- like I growing up, I never really had birthday parties. I think it's another Asian cultural thing, because yeah. my parents were more like, it's your birthday. We spent all these years looking after you, <laughs> so you should be a day of you. Well, they don't expect money, yeah. but they expect like us to pour them some tea as a sign of respect and that type of stuff. Instead oh, so you of have to look after them on your birthday. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So birthday presents and parties were never a thing for me. And so when I remember my eighth birthday, I was like, "Whoa, McDonald's party! What the heck? I actually get to celebrate me?" Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. it was very different. Yeah. yeah, for me it was like, "Oh, it's your birthday. Here's some pocket money." <sighs> But you're going to spend it, so let me hold on to it for you. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very oh, different. That's funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah no, yeah. We, we had one. But because we never really had takeaway, mm. it was, it would, like, you were so excited for it because you, you, it wasn't a regular thing that we would have mm. ever. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, same thing. I'm, my dad being a chef, he's like, why why buy this? I can make it for, uh, like, yeah. even cheaper, fresh yeah, or whatever. Better. Exactly. Yeah. The same old. <laughs> and that's the problem. I feel like, that's why I would always want to learn to cook from the both of you instead, because I feel like I need that explicit level of add this, do this, add that, right? In my cooking, because I can't follow um, when someone just goes off on the fly. And as in, I think it's a very different type of kitchen from the Chinese one to a Western one, because mm. my dad was telling me whenever they hire someone, they expect them that they already know the recipes yeah. and mm. the way to do it. I mean, you might tweak it. Well, it kind of flavor. feels like, yeah, almost feels like the Asian um, mm. cuisine is very much like Eyeball. just chuck this in. Yeah. Like it there's is. no recipe. Yeah. Like you yeah. know what ingredients you're using. Um, you you can kind of get a feel for what how much you need of each ingredient. Whereas like the Western stuff is more like, okay, you need this many grams of this, you need mm-hmm. this many grams of this. Until this, the this, colors this, this. is golden brown, for yeah. example, or smells of like this, this the texture. Whereas Chinese, my dad's just like, what do you mean? Just look at it. I'm like, it's like YOLO. What do you mean? I, I am yeah. dad, I'm looking well, at it. That's how, that's how I kind of cook as well. So yeah? I use a recipe as mm-hmm. like a guide. Yep. But you know, I like things like garlic. I like a lot of garlic. Mm-hmm. So I always put oh, the extra yeah. in. So once I've cooked it sort of once, mm basically following recipe i just wing it from then on and just mm. you know make it my own mm. just like yeah. add what you like to yeah it but i think once you it. know once you know what you like mm. um and how you know a recipe should be made from then on you can go mm. and just do whatever so i really like cooking because i don't like baking and i know you like mm. baking yeah because <laughs> mm. baking's so much more precise and you have to oh, follow yeah. you have to follow the measurements mm. so i don't i don't like cooking like mm. that so yeah so with the both of you like one of you being a cook and one of you being a baker, would you feel that the both of you are more attracted to those type of TV shows, reality TV shows, or less attracted to it? Like, for example, whether it's The Great Bake Off or like Master Chef or My uh, Kitchen Rules, these type of stuff, would you tend to watch it more or less? Because I know talking to non cooks around the office, they always love it, right? Mm. Oh my God, have you seen this and the way they cooked it? I don't know, but. When this, those shows come on, do you two naturally gravitate towards it just to see what they're cooking? What ones do you like to watch? I, I used to watch it, but then it got very problematic. Um, because I used to watch some a YouTube co- a channel called Bon Appetit. Ah, yes. But then they had this whole thing um, with them underpaying um, people of colour and right. indigenous people. And so it was kind of like a, well, if they're going to do that, I'm not, prob- not going to support that whole mm. channel yeah so i used to like watching them and the thing i like to watch about them was because they'd actually it'd be like recipe videos mm-hmm. but then most of it's like experiment so yeah. i was like okay how can we make the best version of this how can mm. we make the best version of this yeah. and then they're like going different places and mm. they're like okay this is how we did it mm. blah, blah blah can i incorporate that into my own recipe yeah. that was what i enjoyed about it how about mainstream though mainstream mainstream TV? I like watching both, but I do get more excited when it's baking. Okay. <laughs> See, I, I like. I used to love My Kitchen Rules. It hasn't been yep. on for a couple of years, but yeah. I love My Kitchen because they were Home Chefs. Mm. I don't really like Master Chef because mm. they're they're too good. Yeah. <laughs> they're exper- Most of them are experienced cooks, yeah. and none you know none of us at home can cook like that. Yeah. Not, you know, no matter what we do, we can't yeah. cook like that. So that's why I really liked um, My Kitchen Rules mm. um, for that for that reason. Mm. But I don't really like baking, so I don't watch shows like you know mm. the. Great. British Bake Off oh, or Australian yeah. Bake Off or yeah. things like that. But I did watch one last night, um, Snack Masters. 
which is a it's a new one. Mm. So the chefs have to try and replicate um, a diff- different snacks that we would normally eat. So like okay. twisties and last ah. night they did Cadbury favorites, mm. the picnic oh. and cherry wraps and things like that. So okay. that's, that was interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, I like that they showed a lot of the manufacturing, so how it's made in, in you know big proportions. Yeah. So that was that was really interesting mm. too. But yeah, my kitchen rolls is the one I like the most. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of in- yeah. it's kind of interesting because the whole like Bon Appetit channel. They have a member who's left since left, Claire mm, Saffitz. The lady, yeah. She, yeah, she does this thing where it's like um, gourmet, gourmet makes. makes. Yeah, yeah, gourmet makes, and she'll do things like making um, tim like pocky like tim tams M&Ms, that type of stuff. M and M's, yeah, yeah, yeah skittles, gourmet versions of them. Yeah. yeah. So she has to make gourmet versions of them where she doesn't have access to the actual industrial tools. Yeah. And she has to try and mimic a home kitchen to make all of it. Ah, interesting. That's so pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I watched it recently. We've been watching on YouTube um, a guy. What does he call himself? Mm. Um, what does he do? He, well, he's so he's an Asian chef. I think he's a chef, mm. but he um, so he'll crit- to critique people like Uncle Roger. Ah. Uncle Roger. Ah. So I love it when he, yeah. <laughs> I love it when he critiques like Jamie Oliver or anybody oh, who cooks rice dishes. He like hates fried Jamie rice. He Oliver. goes at them. Yeah. It's so funny. But he does <laughs> like Gordon funny. Ramsay though. He yeah. does like, he's like, oh, Gordon Ramsay, multiple walks. Not bad. Yeah, not, not bad. bad, not bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he cracks us up. <laughs> <laughs> he's really funny. He's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, because mm. yeah, I remember master chef the first season i watched it it used to be that idea of home cooked chefs yeah. but then every single year because it kept upping the yeah. level so much mm. that it actually did become you almost had to have experience but on paper you didn't have experience yeah. that's yeah. the best so way to put yeah, it the first season was the best season yeah. mm. but from then on it just it, yeah like we can't replicate a lot of those things at home yeah. so why, why am i watching it when i can yeah. watch mkr and i can make all that stuff at home because they're cooking their own kitchens exactly mm. exactly so, so i'd wish they'd bring mm. that show back yeah i did i did have an acquaintance that was a contestant on master chef and she did go pretty far she made it up to like she finished the Heston Blumenthal week and she didn't ever have any cooking in the street background with her but I think she just liked baking at home and stuff like that so she was famous for a few years ago where she made like the dessert ball where you crack it open and it opens up and then there's dessert inside and I think now a lot of people have done like variations of that Mm. but she was known as the first person to do something like that so it's pretty interesting yeah a guy guy that I went to university with he Mm. um he went on to master chef um, I think he, he made it to the first couple of rounds and then, mm. yeah, then it's yep. taken out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's pretty yeah. fun seeing like some people, you know, as yeah. like TV stars. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, just like having that nostalgia of being like, oh, I went to class with this person. Yeah. And like, oh, <laughs> I saw him on the streets. Yeah. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I, I don't have any of that very much other than her, I don't think. I've seen yeah. a couple of people that I used to work, I used to work at Big W, um, and I've seen a couple of people on, um, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, yeah, there's a couple oh. of people on there. Did they go far? Uh, I think one person won about twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's. A- that's so, okay, okay, decent. Rest, Something but... that Big W won't pay you for. No, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, on that note, I had um, three friends. They're a triplets. They went one on one of the game shows. It might have been Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I, I don't really remember. Mm. But um, the triplets went on to a game show. They won. And then they won their mum a car as well, oh, as nice. well as the prize yeah. money. Mm. And it was just like everyone just like in that friend group, we were all stopped what we were doing. Like everyone was doing assignments and we we're like, no, wait, they're on. It's live. <laughs> okay. So we all like jumped off at everything, sat in front of the TV. And then we were just like going off yeah. on our messenger, just being like, oh, that was a really yeah, bad answer. It's answer-. exciting when you see some of the, you know, on TV. So yeah. it actually was that. live. Yeah. Yeah. Actual oh. live? It wasn't live live, yeah. but it was like streamed live. As a, yeah, as because I, mean. I remember um, one of uh, one of my cousin-in-laws, so my wife's cousins, she went to high school with two of the winners from MKR. One is one of the later seasons, so either second last or the one before. That was two Asian ladies, they won. But the thing is, so they knew they won, of course, mm. and they're not allowed to tell anyone. Yeah. So they actually had this like watching party at like a pub together. Ah. And then so they had to kind of hold it in that they had won, yeah. but they had all their friends and family watch it with them. And then so when they announced that they actually did win, they're like, oh my God, you won? Yeah. Like, oh my God, so it's like not well, actually live. Now, yeah. now because, of, because it used to get mm. out who won, they actually um, record two endings. 
Oh. So they record both teams winning, and yep. they only show the, the team that won, so it doesn't mm. sneak out to you know. The oh rest yeah, of, of course. Yeah. Because it was stupid. Because people were making bets on it, yeah. and then it's like, well, why make bets on it when there's producers and people who already know the answer, and they tip it off to their friends yeah, and family exactly anyway. Right. So yeah. they do the same for love. Uh, those love finding love game shows as well. Like yeah. where does Bachelor or Love Island? Same thing. There's like, oh, who will they end up with? You know, it's like they know. Yeah, yeah right now. exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> oh, or, I can't stand those or shows. stage. <laughs> oh, I'm not, not me. Nah, not Bachelorette, me. Love Island, can't do those. Uh, can't. Year nine office me. apparently loves it. Oh, so does the Year Eleven office. They love it too. So, well, the old yeah, some of the old yeah, Year Eleven. Yeah, office. I'm yeah. Ma- married at first sight. So, oh god. I oh, see. Stand. I like married at first sight. So. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh so that, now there's an exception no, now. Yeah, isn't I do like like Love Island and Bachelorette. Okay, oh, okay, okay. that's gross, but I, I do love married at first sight. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of drama there, so that's why I love it. Yeah. Oh, well, geez. while we're on the same topic, segue. Mm. Um, basically, <laughs> yeah. it's getting into that time where we recommend a TV show for our audience. Mm. So, um, does anyone want to start? I forgot mine. I'm gonna look at my phone again. Uh, okay, I'll start, start with, with mine. Yes. I think. So my, my one uh, is yes, the right. help. Oh no, not the help. Hidden figures. Hidden figures. Hidden figures. Very similar theme to the help, but hidden mm. figures was my recommendation, mainly because it does talk a bit about the whole. Um, rocketry aspect of, of where NASA is trying to launch their first lo- rocket into space and they have a um, a group of scientists mm. or not scientists male mathematicians yeah who are called the computers yeah and that is basically just because of their own brains processing power and their ability to calculate maths at like really high speed and so the help is about um, Hidden figures. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hidden figures yeah. is about um, these group of women. Um, Af- I think they're Afri- African American yeah. women. Yeah. Mm. Um, kind of trying to navigate that whole workplace because it's a very um, white male dominant workplace. And then it's more about um, fighting for their own fairness and their own mm. um, rights. And so, yeah, I think it's a good film to watch yeah Mm. one of them's trying to get into university yeah Mm. and like it's a whole story about it yeah it's a really good movie yeah Yeah. i think um some classes here at school do show it because i know miss bond does have a dvd copy of it but i forgot which classes whether it's the civil rights class i don't know which class it is but i'm pretty sure it is part of the curriculum here for one of the classes oh, so, that's good. so yeah it's a really good movie it. it's interesting mm. yeah because you know we weren't around back then no. mm. most of us mm-hmm. i definitely oh, wasn't <laughs> oh you know only people like mr colbert <laughs> and uh, mr coates yeah they, they were around 50 at the time yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah we never really experienced yeah. as bad as it was back then mm. so yeah it's, it's really interesting mm. but the help as well yeah. I like that one too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, same same actor. Yeah. Um, so I really like Yellowstone, which has come back in come back on on Stan, and I love Grey's Anatomy. Mm, classic. Mm. I love all the drama yeah. TV shows. Because <laughs> Grey's Anatomy went for how many seasons? It's like... uh, I think we're up to see season eighteen. Mm. Is it still going? It's, yeah, it's still Wait. going. Oh wow! I thought it had <laughs> ended. I thought it's like no. No, it's season 18 at the moment. Mm. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they had a break for Thanksgiving week. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's back on. It yeah. also, it also um, it pairs up with a show called Station 19, which yep. is about the firefighters, and they, mm. they um, yep. you do crossovers every now mm. and then. Yeah, they yeah. tend to do that for American shows quite a bit, which I kind of wish they would do a bit more for some of the shows over here mm. as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's like kind of like what, Chicago Yeah, Chicago Fire, Fire Chicago with, Med, and yeah. Chicago PD. Yeah, we yeah. watch those too. Yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we really like those I, as well. I don't watch them, but I just know that they cross over. <laughs> yeah, they so, do. Yeah, it's exactly. the best when it crosses over. Because yeah. yeah. if you yeah. like the shows, the, yeah, when they cross over, it's... Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll finish off with a show that, because um, I had told myself for the longest time, I'm not going to start a new anime. It takes up too much time to watch so many, and I've got so much stuff to do. But I've got it was one of my good mates who recommended for me. He's like, look, for a lighthearted time, you don't feel, you don't have the urge to feel like you have to watch what's happening next episode, what's happening. You just enjoy one at a time because it's like short comedy skits, that type of thing. Mm. And it's called Saiki dot K. And it's about a, it's about a young boy who was born with crazy high IQ powers and his telepathic powers. So it's like a comedy. He's like by his third month, he can start walking already and did his first errand or something like that for his parents. Mm. So it was just like just random 
hijinks that happens in high school because of his yeah. telepathic abilities. Or it'll be like um, he fell asleep and then he accidentally transported the whole ho hotel that he and his classmates were in for the excursion into like the middle of the sea. <laughs> and it's like, what? Yeah, exactly. So it's just a random hijinks. So it's like, if you're ever looking for just a random time, just say, you know what? I'm going to just chuck on one show. I only got like, what, 15 minutes? Watch one thing? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, that's the anime I would recommend. Mm -hmm. It's pretty like um, relaxing. Almost like early days Rick and Morty, I'd say. Just like less violent. Yeah, yeah. Early and day like, Rick and Morty's before things started intertwining with each other. And having like a full-on storyline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never watched anime. That's all right. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of cartoons. <laughs> yep, that's okay. <laughs> that's I used to watch The Simpsons and that's about as far as my cartoon knowledge I goes. I would recommend um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah, I've good seen watch. I've seen it on Netflix, we've just never um never turned it on. Turned it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yep. a good laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think mm. that's something that my husband would like. Mm. Yeah. He likes a lot of cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I know he likes Marvel movies. <laughs> he loves Marvel movies. Well, he used to love Marvel movies. <laughs> 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 yeah. So oh, cool. I guess that on that's the end of the podcast, yeah? Mm. So on that note, um, thank you again for tuning in for this podcast. Um, if you have any feedback on who you'd like us to um, interview or just chat with again, just leave that in the comment section below. The, I think it's just come find us around just, school. Just yeah. find us, tell us. You know, um, at this point. U7 office yep. at the moment. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, as always, we hope you stay healthy and... Stay happy, everyone. And once again, thank, thank you, you to our guests. Thank, thank you, Hajay. Thank you, Mr. Liz. Thank you. Yeah, make sure you say hi to her around the yard. Yeah, and you got more things to talk to her about in class as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. See ya. Bye.